here. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor because you deserve yes. all of our praise. Amen. Now, Amen. Lord, touch Brother Fred as he ministers tonight. Fill his mouth with your words. Let us be attentive and let us our hearts receive your word tonight that it will impact our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Charged and supercharged. Okay. So Sherry and I are excited about this message and uh, uh, the application to it though is uh, healing, but it can be applied to a lot of different areas. But in particular, we will uh, address the idea of healing uh, with it, but it also addresses signs and wonders and miracles and uh, lots of different uh, topics. But oh, our bodies, uh, the human body, uh, it has currents going through it. Uh, and of course, so every cell is uh, electrified. Uh, it has electrical particles and it's moving and it's a living uh, thing within our bodies. And, and th that's where I want to start just in a natural sense to talk about it. But I know many of you know much more about it than I do. But what we see is that we are electrical. We're on an electrical unit and it has, mm. it said trillions of volts uh, through going through the body, each human body. And because every cell is electrified and uh, well, that has a lot of uh, impact on our healing. But for example, uh, if there are uh, some circuits that are broken or some currents that are broken uh, because of damages, uh, then uh, we could have diseases and, and uh, we could have damage our organs. So we've got mm -hmm. uh, these nerves and uh, sending signals and uh, electric current uh, from the brain to the different organs. And it goes through the spinal cord uh, but if we've got a problem with the spinal cord, then that energy is not going to flow and we can have some problems and uh, serious problems uh, with the, if the heart's not getting enough uh, electricity, then uh, you could have a, a, a disaster or damage the heart in some way. Same way with a pancreas or thyroid, whatever is not uh, being fed with electricity, uh, then mm -hmm. it uh, is a candidate over time might not happen immediately, but over time, uh, if it's not getting the electrical pulses uh, and uh, messages from the brain, then that particular organ can be damaged and even diseased. And so that's a, just a good starting point, uh, but uh, we can surcharge, mm -hmm. we, can, we can charge up our bodies. For example, uh, many people have implanted in them a, uh, Pace maker. maker or a defibrillator, defibrillator. Uh, that, that gives electrical charges to the heart to bring it back into rhythm. And I have a friend uh, who's been a, a paramedic for years and uh, on an uh, ambulance, driving an ambulance and uh, uh, working with uh, patients who need health care. And he and his partner were telling me one day that they had picked up a uh, client, uh, patient, and or taking that man to the hospital, and on the way he died. And uh, uh, they w were experts, and so they could tell he's dead. They, they looked at the uh, natural science and saw he's dead. They got an electrical uh, device and shocked his heart back into being, and he came right back alive. And uh, he was talking and behaving just as if nothing had happened. But it was that electricity that went through his mm -hmm. body that caused him uh, to do that. Well, let's look at a dead man in the Bible. Yeah. In uh, I've got Second uh, Second Kings, and uh, there was a, a great prophet of God that we know about. Uh, his name was Elisha, uh, or Elisha, and uh, he had studied under Elijah, and and uh, many years been a prophet in Israel, uh, but when he died. They uh, put him, buried him, uh, and and then one day there was a man who was dead mm -hmm. uh, in Israel, and they decided to bury him. But while they were burying him, some raiders came in, and so they just had to get rid of the body 
and they threw the body into the sepulcher. And when it touched the bones of Elisha, that uh, he came back alive. It's like he was shocked. Mm -hmm. Electrical mm -hmm. shock went mm -hmm. through him. And that's what what was inside uh, the bones of Elisha. Mm -hmm. There was fire shut up in his bones. Mm, hallelujah. It was a, an electrical charge. Uh, we could also call it the anointing. But what I want you to see is just like a dead man uh, who you put uh, electrical charges on his heart and he came back alive. And so they just laid him over or even dropped him into the sepulcher of Elisha. And when he touched the bones, he came back to life. Uh, to life. And so I want Sherry to read this. Second Kings thirteen twenty one, And welcome Tommy and Victoria and little baby Anna. Uh, so it was as they were burying a man that suddenly they spied a band of raiders. And they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, this is the same thing they did with my dad um, about a year and a half ago. Um, he he died and, and he had had COVID and pneumonia and and he died and they they shocked his heart. And he, he does have a pacemaker and that started up again and the Lord brought him back. And so I give the Lord praise for that. Uh, but it's, um, it's important. <laughs> so, okay. So what, what I'm talking about tonight are two kinds of electrical charges. One is a natural and uh, that's, that's what's going through our bodies. Of course, God, uh, created everything so he's the one he's the creator of the universe so he created all of this energy uh, that goes along in our body uh, that keeps it alive and working and moving and and whatever we do eating and drinking and walking what all of that's because we have this uh, electricity flowing through our bodies we could look at it very much in the sense of it being a natural uh, thing and like i said uh, people have pacemakers or defibrillators implanted in their body to send those electric signals uh, to the heart to change its rhythm or even uh, they can apply a great deal of electricity and bring back a dead man back to life just like like i had explain, explained but there's also the supernatural amen and that's what i call supercharged so in the natural mm -hmm. there's a can be a charging uh, of electricity in our bodies and if we don't have uh, some uh, electricity flowing through our body in some way. And this is the reason we talked about skeletons and frames and bones the other day, because it's important for our mm -hmm. frame to be straight and the energy to be flowing out. And, and that keeps us healthy. But if there's a damage to our frame or, or something hindering the flow of energy, mm -hmm. electricity from our brain to down to that organ, then uh, that organ can be injured. But what we see, there's also in the supernatural realm, there's energy. And that's really what I mm, focus hallelujah. on. This message is not really about the natural, but I want to talk to you about the natural. And by that, then you can understand more like the supernatural. That's the way Jesus taught. He started with natural, natural things. things. And he moved it to the supernatural. And he said, if you can't even, if you can't understand it this way, how are you going to understand uh, supernatural things that have no earthly uh, parallel concept? And so that's the reason we're starting talking about uh, energy flowing in the natural, in our natural lives. And we want that to happen and we can have healing. And so mm -hmm. we could have had a, a damage to our heart because the energy wasn't flowing. But we can um, straighten up the frame and uh, let Ooh, the energy flow, flow and, and bring healing to the body. Mm -hmm. But that's also, there's the supernatural realm. Yes. And again, this is an application that I'm talking about today. The natural charging of uh, electricity of the body and the supernatural. And both of those can bring healing uh, to, our, uh, to our lives. And what I want you to see uh, from a verse in Job and Habakkuk, that there is lightning coming out of God's hands. Mm, That's yeah. how much electricity he has in his hands. As a matter of fact, 
that you may have read after the uh, Christian uh, C.S. Lewis. Uh, he said, uh, and this was a long time ago, in uh, the book Mere Christianity, he said that God is a fountain of energy. Woo! Hallelujah! So that's really interesting. To that's me. us. So let's look. <laughs> let's look at uh, the verse in Job. Then we'll look at Habakkuk. Mm -hmm. Habakkuk three. Wonderful. And I want to welcome Lucy and, and little Luke. Wonderful to see you guys here in Job. You, there you are. In Job 36, 32, he covers his hands with lightning and commands it to strike. Ooh, I, I like that. And it hits the mark when he oh, does it. Oh, that's the exactly right. Over there is going to hit. Right. Habakkuk 3, 4. His brightness will be as lightning, a two-pronged lightning bolt flashing from his hand. This is the outward display of of his power. Okay, so Hallelujah. how does he display his power? It's with energy. It's with great energy. Amen. Like Amen. Like lightning. Can I tell my... my okay, my, now yeah. here. So let's <laughs> let hear. Just a, yeah, just a, a personal um, experience. I was ministering uh, at a, a women's conference, and afterwards, the uh, one of the women came up to me, and she said... I just want to tell you that when you put your hands toward us, I saw blue fire come out of your hand. And I said, oh, wow, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And so I rejoiced in that. And then I was in another meeting and, and the, another woman came to me and she said, you know, I just saw blue fire coming out of your hand. And I said, well, that's great. And then I was doing one of my videos, and afterwards I get a text message from a woman that says, "While you were while you were ministering on your video, I saw blue fire come out of your hands." And so, in the name of Jesus, at the end of this session, we're going to believe the Lord. We're going to put our fires together. Amen. We're going to be uh, not only charged. But we're going to be supercharged. Hallelujah. 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 So when we talk about supercharged, we're talking about the supernatural realm. There's one time uh, when I was in Cuba and uh, I taught about the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit and asked people if they wanted to be filled with the Spirit. And the whole room of uh, people came up and I began praying. And one of the first uh, men I prayed for was very unusual. Uh, I just touched uh, his forehead with my hand, and just as I was touching him, he was catapulted into the air. Uh, he was about six or seven feet from the ground, he was w over my head, and he was just on his back up in the air for, for just a, a second. He was just catapulted up there, and then he came back. He fell. He was just uh, uh, falling. He fell on the concrete. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know whether his uh, back was broken mm -hmm. or whether he's dead or what, but I kept praying for people and just giving him an opportunity to see what he did. And what he did was really amazing to me. He jumped up as if he hadn't fallen, but he, he had <laughs> fallen like seven or eight fall, feet <laughs> on his back uh, without uh, supporting himself because he was uh, in the spirit. He was just slain in the spirit. When he came down, he just stayed there for a few seconds and then he jumped up and he started praying for people. He started praying for people to be filled with the Spirit. So he just turned around, started praying for the next people in line. Uh, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a real important point to make in that is that I don't know if you've ever been uh, slain in the Spirit, uh, but Jerry and I both have. Uh, and uh, we pray for people, and they are slain in the Spirit. Now, what happens, there's such a uh, supernatural uh, charge of electricity, mm -hmm. of energy uh, that flows into their life. Their natural muscles can't yeah, even... In their bodies. It, it goes into their body. Uh, their natural bo uh, bodies can't uh, uh, withstand it, can't hold up under it, and they and they fall over. They just crumble, and they, they fall over. And it, it's, it doesn't hurt them. Uh, they just fall. And mm -hmm. we try to have people behind them uh, 
uh, to catch them, but uh, that's what happens. It's the it's a surge of divine energy, and that's really what mm -hmm. we're talking about tonight. A divine energy mm -hmm. that that flows into their bodies. Okay. Now the reason I want to talk about that is when you receive a divine surge of energy mm -hmm. into your bodies, what, what do you do? You have to start giving it away. And, and so when you, you release it, well, you have to release it. Uh, that's the only way you can keep it uh, is by giving it out to others uh, because it's not you and, and uh, not yours. It's, it's just something that's going to flow through you. So that mm. energy surge will diminish and you've got to keep being charged and recharged. Yes, I mean. Uh, I mean. And, and so this is an important good, thing to, to talk about. And uh, so what a lot of people do, uh, they just simply uh, receive a, a charge from the Holy Spirit. Maybe they're slain in the Spirit or maybe they're not. It doesn't matter. Even in these meetings here, uh, we could release the energy of God and it could go into your body. And, and you could easily say, well, that was nice. And then just go your way and never think about it again. But what that's going to do, it's going to supercharge you supernaturally. Mm -hmm. It's a divine charge on your life. And, and then you can turn and give it away to other people. Right. And you begin to become that vessel of honor as you begin to pray for other people to be healed. See, this message is focusing on healing, but it's looking at it both from natural kinds of mm -hmm. uh, energy and uh, but most importantly about supernatural uh, supernatural energy and so God uh, energizes all of us and and we're alive today because he breathed breath yes, in, into I mean. Adam and, and then that has been uh, continued on from generation to generation amen, amen. And so I want to look at a few verses about energy and uh, what we're going to look at, uh, is our English word for energy, and you think about that, it's E-N-E-R-G. Okay, that's the first five letters. And the next letter is Y. Well, there's a Greek letter, that's a Greek, Greek word, word that's just like it. It also is E-N-E-R-G. The first five letters, exactly the same as the Greek. And that's where we get the word energy from. It's the Greek word. Uh, just looking at it and pronouncing it by the letters, the next letter is E, where ours is Y. So it's energy. And then it has another O. Then it has another letter O, energy O. And so what I'm going to be looking at is our, a number of verses, and they all have in the Greek this word, what I would say, energy O. Uh, it probably has a different pronunciation in energy, but when I see it with my eyes, it looks like energy. Mm. It's the word we get energy from. It's generally translated as working or works. Uh, but uh, all of this that I'm going to, these verses that we're going to cover, this all comes from the Vines Expository Dictionary. We're just looking at one word. Uh, it's energy, uh, the Greek word. Mm -hmm. okay, first, so first one is about, we're going to look at God. Some verses that say that God is energizing. Mm -hmm. He energizes all in all. Mm -hmm. He energizes all things. He's the creator. He's the creator, see, of mm -hmm. all things. And so one of the things he created is energy. And it's not only natural energy, but it's also supernatural energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's look uh, first at this uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 6. I'm sure to read this, mm -hmm. but now in the English, it's going to say work, but in the Hebrew, it's going to say energy. Okay. In the Greek. In the Greek, it's going to say energy. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians 12, 6. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works our energy, -o, our energy -s, all in all. Okay, so God is energizing everything. He's all in all energizing all in all. Galatians 2 8. Okay, now this is interesting. It says he in energizes our ministry. Mm, you, you might mm, think, oh, mm. I, I've uh, worked hard. I've got a ministry and I've worked hard. But this says 
the ministry is energized by oh, God. Oh, hallelujah, That's hallelujah. Look at this. For he who worked effectively in Peter okay. for the apostleship. Okay, so he energized his, uh, his apostle, works, his uh, apostleship, yeah, yeah, his yeah. ministry. To the circumcised also worked or energized effectively in me toward the gentiles okay so here's the apostleship how did it come about god energized the apostleship Amen. the ministry Amen. of peter for the jews he uh, energized the apostleship of uh paul for the gentiles that's you and me Amen. Okay? Amen. now there's this, this next one in galatians 3, galatians and galatians 3 5 therefore he who supplies the spirit to you are God's power to you. Who gives us the power is the and is works or energizes miracles among you. Does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Okay, it's by faith. Oh, it's by faith. Oh, okay, so if the energy is going to flow in your body, you've got to believe for it. it it's a it's a mm. uh, an effort related to faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, now there's several things. Want us to see in uh, Ephesians several verses in mm -hmm. Ephesians. Ephesians one eleven. This is all. All of these words are work, but they're really energy. Okay. In Him also we have our, uh, obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of Him, or of God who works all things according to the counsel of His will. Okay. Hallelujah. So God is energizing everything according to his purpose. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Let's Ephesians 120. Word. Which he worked or energized in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Okay. So God, you know, if you think back, Jesus died on the cross. He was dead. He was dead, dead on the cross. They buried him. And God energized him and brought him back to life. But it didn't just stop it there. He took him all the way to heaven and seated him at his own right hand. Again. But now here's the next one still in Ephesians. Yeah, and, and this one I love. And this one, he's going, the same God that energized Christ when he was dead mm -hmm. is energizing you. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly abundantly uh -huh. above all that we ask or think according to the power or the energy that works in you works in you or is energized in you all the Hallelujah. power see what is what's the difference between power and energy power is something stored but when it becomes active uh -huh. that and, and manifests the power energy. that is energy so it's good mm -hmm. to say oh i was mm -hmm. baptized Dies with the spirit, filled with the spirit 30 years ago. Well, that's power within you. But mm -hmm. what are you doing with it? See, it's when you release it as energy. You pray for people. You you prophesy to people. That That's all mm -hmm. related to mm -hmm. energy. Hallelujah. And then in Philippians 2.13, For it is God who works in you, or who energizes George, who energizes joy, and Wendy and New Song and Tommy and Victoria and, and Lucy and Luke. It is he who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Okay, so it's his energy that's bringing forth his will and his purpose. Okay, and one more, Colossians 1.29. To this end, I also labor, striving according to his working our energy, which works, our energizes in me mightily. Okay, hallelujah. So we, we cannot even labor in the kingdom without the energy of God. Okay, so it's his energy that's energizing us and enabling us to do what we do. That's all of us. Right. It's his energy. It's his energy. Now, that was you know, all. Let me, let me just tell them how this message really came about. And that is, after we got back from Cuba, there was such a, um, a time of rejoicing, but it was also a time of 
recharging because we uh, a week later we got back on the plane uh, and went to Dallas and went to the meeting and ministered there and uh, and so it was a, a time that we needed to 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 recharge ourselves with the power of God and recharge ourselves with with his will and his purposes and that's what that's what we do when we we have the energy of God okay okay so the next is the Holy Spirit is energizing the Holy Spirit energizes us and you might well, there's a lot of people say oh I don't need the Holy Spirit well mm -hmm. you're not energized to the optimum amount if you don't have a relationship mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit energizes you and this is how all of the gifts of the spirit operates mm -hmm. it's through his energy so well, let's look at um, and I want to give a praise report here uh, we also went to see Travis and Amy Elizabeth and her husband and and Annabelle our granddaughter uh, came to where we were in Austin and our granddaughter received we were one evening we were talking about the Holy Spirit and the power of God and she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit she began to speak in tongues and she's in her fixing to be in her second year uh, at Texas A&M and it was just a time of of gladness for us and and um, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Okay. Okay. So, First Corinthians um, twelve eleven says, "But one and the same Spirit works or energizes all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills." And so He has something for all of us to do, and He gives us the energy to do that. Okay. For instance, new song may have something different to do than Lucy, but he will energize both of you to do the work. He will do that. The Holy Spirit will do that. Okay. And then first. So, so you've got all of these verses. And I, I'm going to just uh, all of the gifts of the Spirit. There, Those are all endowments of energy, all endowments of energy. So how are you able to do those? It's it's through the energy of the Holy Spirit. I want to drop down to the next to say is that the Word of God is energizing. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of verses here uh, from Thessalonians and Hebrews. I want Sherry to read. Okay. First Thessalonians 2.13. For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing. Because when you received the Word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as the Word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which is also effectively works in those who believe. Okay. Hallelujah. That, 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 that phrase again, mm. effectively works, that's energizing. That's the word we get energy from in the Greek. And, and so the word of God is energizing. Now let's look at Hebrews 4.12 and we'll read it out of the Amplified. And even the way they... Uh, translate it. It has the word energy. The mm. word of God energizes, okay? For the word of God is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. Okay. All right. Let's just stop right there. Okay. So the word of God is energizing. So when you encounter the living word of God and it comes alive to you, it's going to energize you. So when you uh, are in the presence of God, mm -hmm. you encounter God, he will energize you. And when you are, have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, he will energize you. He will give you a gift of the spirit, which are all endowments of energy mm -hmm. and and it's that energy, you receive that energy, then you have to give it away. You have to give it away. That's that's the only way mm -hmm. uh, you benefit from it is you start giving it away. Give it away. Because when you encounter God or His Spirit or His Word, and that's mm -hmm. His Son, Jesus, you encounter any of those. And like I said, C.S. Lewis said, God is a fountain of energy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. if we let that energy be distorted, are not you see 
it, it's not going to benefit us. Or if we just th have a great encounter with God and we don't do anything about it, uh, that energy will diminish over time. And, and so he gives mm -hmm. us these encounters with him and experience him and his presence and his, his energy that uh, energizes us and we're to turn and give it away. Now, faith, mm -hmm. let's move on to faith. Uh, faith energizes. Oh, hallelujah. It yeah. comes from the word. The faith, see, comes from the word, mm -hmm. from hearing the word. And so faith is an energy source. Ooh, hallelujah. So read this verse here. Okay, Galatians, Galatians. 5, 6. Okay. For if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision or, or uncircumcision counts for anything. But only faith activated and energized and expressed and working through what? Love. Uh, hallelujah. So there it is. Hallelujah. Faith is energizing. So let's just review these points. And I'm covering a lot of ground today, but this is just to get you thinking about things. God will energize you. His spirit will energize you. His, His word, word will when it becomes alive to you, it will energize Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. And your faith will be energizing and, and it'll energize your love and, and the fruit mm. of the spirit. And it will energize uh, the gifts of the spirit. Mm. Okay, so how does that go into healing? Well, it's called the works of miracle or the mm. energy of miracles. Mm. See, miracles are high energy. energy. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. high energy. energy you've got to have to have a miracle you have to have a high high energy and you can say well uh i don't care about any energy i, I just don't care about it well if you're going to operate to do god's will and to fulfill your ministry mm -hmm. and your purpose uh, and to be a pleasure to him it's by the energy of god it he energizes you uh paul said uh, i'm i'm what I am what I am by the grace, grace of, of God. God. And I strive and I'm laboring. But it's not me that's doing all of that. It's the grace of God that's working within me. So there has to be something working within you. Now I'm going to just get to some simple applications. We have to build ourselves up. We're going to go to Jude. And I'm bringing this to closure. I'm just trying to bring some, some simple applications to this message. Mm -hmm. But I want you to be thinking that we need to be energized to be effective mm. uh, in our lives. Mm -hmm. We have to be energized. If we don't have any energy in our bodies, we're dead. That, mm -hmm. That's, that's mm -hmm. when they said you're dead, when you don't have any energy. Right, under. right. So you can have a natural energy, but I'm talking about something greater than that, a supernatural energy mm -hmm. that supercharges you and, and uh, enables you to do great and mighty, mighty things. things for God. And in, in Jude verse 20 it says, but you, that's talking to every one of us, build yourself up or energize yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in your spirit language or by tongues. Keep yourself in the love of God or keep yourself connected i think about all of these electric cars and vehicles that we have to go to the electric uh, meters and we have to plug them in so that they say it's charged up if you want to say charged up you keep yourself in the love of god looking for the mercy of our lord jesus christ unto eternal life okay so there it is we can charge ourselves up. We can take some initiative here. Charge ourselves mm -hmm. up with by praying in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Praying in tongues. Now, you can also do it by getting around people who are energized. Yeah, that's who, right. They're on fire for God. Yes, they're, yes. They're alive. And, and let all of that rub off on you. Let them pray over you. Let mm -hmm, them uh, mm -hmm. release things into your life, and that will energize you. Now, when you encounter God and you're energized, then you need to turn and start praying for other people. Yes, amen. Praying amen. for other people, releasing it. That's the only way mm -hmm. it, it, there's going to be a benefit to it. 
uh, because it will diminish over time. You've got to keep yourself built up. Mm, that, that, yeah. That's real important. Now, here's mm. another application. It's about positive energy and negative energy. Negative energy are being around people who are filled with doubt and worry and uh, anxiety mm. and, and, and and speak negatively. Okay, so if they're if they're filled with all these negative things, they're going to attract negative, more negative energy to them. Or if you are filled with positive energy and you're talk, you're having a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you're talking to faith and you're talking the Word of God, you're speaking the Word of Amen. God, you're, you're declaring the Word of God. See, you're releasing positive energy. Hallelujah. When you're releasing positive energy, you're going to be attracting more positive energy into your life because the Word of God is energizing. God Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And your faith is energizing. It'll energize you. It'll energize other, other people. people. Okay. You know, and it says in Matthew 12, 37, that by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. And so you can either speak the word of God, which is positive, which is energizing, which is powerful, and, and and receive more of the Lord, receive uh, your your prayers and your requests, or you can speak in a negative way against the Word of God, contrary to the Word of God, and it will diminish that power within you. 